All right, I want to welcome everybody. Welcome to the celebration of 70 years since the signing of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights here at the A. Randolph Art Gallery presented by Theater for Justice. Um, I'd like to thank Stephanie Gibson of uh, Keller Williams for graciously co-sponsoring this event and uh, to send a thank, out, thank you out to Felicita Luna for her expanded exhibition. Also, thanks go out to Tiffany Irene for, uh, I mean, of uh, the UNA and Mrs. Uh, uh, oh, Mrs. Uma Uruma, did I say it correctly? Uruma of the New Order National Human Rights Organization. As you uh, enjoy the art here and the items presented, please keep in mind the crisis of human rights in America and the addition, an additional crisis issue. I'm so nervous, sorry. Of uh, those who fight tirelessly to defend what was once a glorious nation. It is important that these issues be directed and uh, expressed in as many avenues as possible. The arts are expre expressly important in helping present our issues um, in a palatable way. Please enjoy the evening. Thank you. Hello and welcome. My name is Stephanie Gibson. I'm with Keller Williams, and I had the great pleasure of meeting Zena a couple years ago, 2016, and helping her to buy this home, which she's now turned into um, this lovely art gallery. Um, Zena. And I met, and immediately I knew that she was someone that I would want to continue a relationship with because of her um, ongoing passion for human rights and, and social, uh, social justice. I had recently, before I met her, read Brian Stevenson's book, um, help me out with the title, Zena, Brian Stevenson and Just Mercy. And very powerful book for me. I've had some some um, instances of dealing with injustice in my own personal family, and the work that she does is tireless and deserves everybody's support. So I would like to be that support. So thank you for coming. Enjoy the art. Thank you. Thank you. We're based in D.C., and our mission is to advocate on behalf of the United Nations. And I'm also a part of the Atlanta chapter here. There's chapters all around the world. Um, my position with the United Nations Association is a Southeast Region representative. So I help maintain the Southeast Regional chapters. And I also do the, uh, the Vice President for PR here in the Atlanta chapter. Um, so I've met Zena, just like everyone else did when we were in D.C., actually. She came with us. Um, we were having our U.N. They, um, UNA at the Capitol, lobbying on behalf of human rights, and she was there and fighting for human rights and justice just like the rest of us, and ever since then, it's just been a wonderful connection, so I thank her so much on behalf of our organization for um, having us here tonight. And um, so I'm gonna pass out to you guys some of our um, initiatives. The United, United Nations is focusing on 17 um, SDG goals, sustainable developmental goals. Um, things such as in the poverty, um, the rights of fair education, um, women's rights, and all those things. So these are very important to us, and we have a global goal to uh, uh, uplift and uphold and fight for these 17 SDG goals. So we lobby for our local officials, we go to the Capitol on the Hill, and um, we fight for human rights and equality for all people. So I'll pass this out so you can learn more about us. And I also want to introduce Maria Valderas, who's also a part of our organization, and she's an artist. And she makes art for human rights. And so I wanted her to come up and she brought her pieces here tonight since we're at an art gallery. Oh, wow. And so she's going to explain one of her pieces for us. And um, so here's Miss Maria Valderas. I came at the age of five, six, so I was raised here, technically. So 
So my artwork is based on, I like to paint the emotions that I have dealt with or you know that I've known that people that suffer like social injustice for either your culture, your ethnicity, your color may feel. So this one is part of an exhibition that I just had called Hope Through Thorns because though it's something like that you can deal with in very different ways. It can impact you um, emotionally very, you know, bad. And as when I was a student in high school, it impacted me because of the new laws and stuff that was going on. But um, in my opinion, it just it was just something that was gonna happen and it was part of my life because of who I am, my culture, or anything about that. And I like to think of life as roses or like a garden because they have thorns, but they end up growing roses. Mm -hmm. Just like, you know, I will grow as a person, as an individual, not, I will not grow as an immigrant or as a female. I will grow as an artist and, you know, as a human being, not just being described as or put on in a corner or in a shadow. So thank you so much for looking at it. I hope, you know, at least something like this touches you um, and lets you think about um, things that touch people emotionally, you know, whether it seems like it's not a big deal or that they seem okay. You know, social injustice can apply to many, many, many things. You know, whether if it's discrimination of whatever language you speak, the color that you are, or anything, or your religion. So thank you so much for listening. Good evening, everyone. My name is Shamika Aruma. I'm here on behalf of, I'm the youth director for New Order National Human Rights Organization. I met Ms. Zena through the founder of New Order, Mr. Gerald Rose, and after speaking with her with my experience, and I see a lot of the portraits and crochet design are by people that are either free or currently incarcerated. And many may look at me, but you will never be able to tell that over 20 some years ago, I was once incarcerated for 10 years of my life just for being around the wrong person at the wrong time. But as you see, I'm out and doing very well. And as I spoke to Miss Miss Crenshaw, and I let her know that with portraits like that one and with a lot of work that's done, a lot of people that are incarcerated, sometimes that's how they make their money, are able to get funds inside of the system. I was able to sometimes, you know, send my family or my kids paintings that they did on cards, or uh, had taken a piece of cloth and did drawings like for Mother Day birthdays, because we don't we don't have cards on the inside. So they made them for us and got paid through commissary, as it's called, for making the cards. And they do need support because a lot of people are not supported behind the walls and a lot of people find it hard to get support once coming outside the wall. I was not allowed to go to any transitional center. I was just allowed to do my time, max out on it, was thrown back out into society with no help at all. So with a few people from church members, from my father, a few family members, that was my support system to keep me going. It has not been a revolving door for me as it's not for a lot of people. But I'm here in support, in support of those still incarcerated and out because they do need help. And all people are not guilty of what they're accused of. I wasn't. Once again, wrong person, wrong place, wrong time. And we fight when we come out here to still make it in society. So I told her I would just give that brief testimony that, hey, we that have been behind the walls still need people's support and know that people care and know that there are those that are out here fighting for our rights. 
Thank you. Now, Kalash is going to be heading out for this evening, and you all can feel free to continue eating. And um, uh, Ms. Gibson has got a great spread for us, and continue to enjoy, enjoy the art. Hopefully, you all have a chance to take a look at the video and see um, um, it's an interview of Felicita and hear her words and talk about our art. But thank you so much for coming out. It's been a great evening.